Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now today is Friday. Praise God. Listen, all week, all month actually, we've been talking about angelic assistance. Let me tell you what to do this weekend. Get in, just, just get to a quiet place and start listening to the message as many as you can listen to. Activate these things. Let them start working in your lives. Praise God. Listen, every word I'm sharing with you ought to be experienced. I'm not just teaching you these things to increase your knowledge so that you go and teach others. No, no, no. It's to increase your knowledge so you will walk in the truth and begin to enjoy the benefit of what Christ has given to us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we bless you today. <laughs> your glory fills the whole earth. And we are here, Lord, and join your glory. Thank you for the bodies that have been lifted right now and yokes that have been destroyed. By the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Yesterday I was sharing with you about strife. How it limits the operation of angels around you. Strife put the angels to sleep. They can't operate in the environment of strife. It is strange to them. Very strange to them. So if you're a child of God and you know what is right, stay completely away from strife. I was praying one day. I wanted to tell you this story yesterday and, and uh, there was no time. So I was praying one day because... See, I love being real when I'm talking to the Lord. I ask a lot of questions. So I was asking the Lord one time. I said, Lord, I don't quite get. You know how, I think we talked about this when we started this angelic series, how the apostles died and most of them died. I mean, some grievous deaths. So I was talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, but why would you let that happen? I don't, there is no way you're going to come. I'm talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, there's no way you're going to convince me that it's a good testimony. No way. That's not a good testimony. That one who confessed the name of Jesus, his head will be cut off. And people are watching. Where were the angels? I mean, where were the angels? These were the same guys at the beginning. They will lock them in prison. An angel will come and rescue them. So what happened? Where were the angels? And the Lord said something to me that shook me to my bones. And I pray, I pray, you have the lever to contain this truth. The Lord said to me, he said, son, they didn't die that way because I chose for them to die that way. They died that way because of strife. I said, what? Strife. I said, yeah. Strife. Yeah. Who were they striving with? And then the Lord reminded me of John the Baptist. There are certain things that are too deep. Too deep. John the Baptist was in prison. Now, this, apart from being a prophet or a minister of God, he was the cousin of Jesus Christ. You remember that? He was the cousin of Jesus Christ. And then he was in prison. Jesus did nothing about him. At some point, he sent a message to Jesus. He said, hey, go and ask him, is he the one or should we expect another? And Jesus said, go and reply him this way. The blind see, the lame walk, the dead is being raised. And then Jesus now said something very important that we've always overlooked. He said, also tell him, blessed is he that is not offended in me. Why well, would Jesus add that? Did he know something we didn't know? You see, until the Spirit of God opens your understanding and begins to teach you, that's what Jesus, he will guide you into all truth. And then the Lord said to me, John the Baptist got into trouble because of offense. 
and the offense came from the place of strife. Listen to me. John knew that his job was to introduce Jesus. That was his job. The moment you introduce Jesus, your ministry is done. So what do you do? Receive a further assignment from the Lord. Your ministry is done doesn't mean you die. Receive a further assignment from the Lord. Well, hey, guess what? He introduced Jesus and he continued preaching. He continued baptizing. Actually, baptism of water should have stopped after he baptized Jesus. But you know, just like it is today, so where will I send all the crowds to? What will I tell all the simple? This is the one I have been talking about. You have already said it. He has come. Everybody follow him. Let's all follow him. What stopped John of becoming a disciple of Jesus? You see where strife began to enter. Envy and strife began to enter. And guess what? And then he continued like that until he got into trouble. And then he got into prison. Where were the angels? They couldn't operate. Until they cut off his head. No angel could stand up to do anything. Why? Because he was in the environment of strife and envy. Which produced offense in his life. So Jesus sent that word of caution to him. Hey, tell him, blessed is he that is not offended in me. Offended in you for what? John was off in offense. He was in offense. So, the Lord was talking to me about, he used that to explain to me something that happened. And that's why even as preachers today, we have to really, really be careful. Now, the disciples, they have preached the gospel for many, many years. And you know what? New, new people were springing up now. Yeah? And then also, um, nations, different nations were taking charge see emperors were ruling and naturally the christian faith is sort of an endangered species what do i mean endangered species because we are the only ones that preach liberation we preach truth see when you know the truth the truth will make you free so we teach people how to live free now no emperor likes free people so you become a problem to them. But you see, when you find yourself in such a situation, how do you handle it? Now that is what can lead you into strife. So when you begin to clash with government authority, sometimes believers are not wise enough. They don't know how to handle it. They get into trouble with the government. They now what makes them get into trouble? They eventually begin to strive with the government. You don't strive with the government. You respect the authority of the government. Whether good or bad, you respect the authority. The only time you should be seen rising, physically going, going against the authority is when you have heard a dust say at the Lord to you. You don't assume that these people are after us, so we must challenge them. or we must. You don't assume those things. The moment you take it up by yourself, you are getting into strife. It doesn't matter who you're getting into strife with, whether a fellow believer or the government of Israel, strife is strife. The moment you get into strife, your angels step back. Tell you what the Lord said to me. And if you're not quick to repent, Satan may destroy you in that state because he's the one in charge right now. So that's what happened. When they began to kill the apostles, instead of the apostles to retrace their steps and seek the mind of the Lord, what happened? One killing increased their strife. Another killing increased their strife. So you see, they are coming for us. It now became we against them. We against them. That's not the gospel that God has sent us to preach. He has never sent us to go against the government. 
So when you see them doing wrong, what do you do? Why are we not supposed to challenge them? Yes, you challenge them, but you challenge them by the word that the Lord has given to you. If the Lord has not given you any word, there is nothing you can say. You go and challenge them by your words, you're getting into strife. But when the word of the Lord comes to you and the Lord says, say this to them, you say, the moment you say it, go and sleep. Angels defend your word. But when the Lord has not spoken to you, you speak out of anger, you speak out of strife, then when you speak that word, you see, because, listen, listen, listen. When we deal with authorities, you must understand this. No matter the anointing you carry on your life, when it comes to the authority, governmental authority, you must respect yourself. Why? Because your anointing, your anointing is not to override their authority. You see, because, you see that anointing you carry is all subject to the authority of governance. That's why it's important you always make sure, especially in the democratic setting, you always make sure people in authority are people who can relate with your authority. To give you peace. That's why the Bible says we should pray for those who are in authority so that we will live a quiet and peaceable life. He says how we should pray for them, not strive against them. So he says we should pray for them, not strive against them. But we don't understand that we strive against them. Now, when they come after us, no defense. And suddenly, you begin to people begin to say, "But where was this God? Where was this God? Where, 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 where? You know that you know what I'm talking about. You got into strife. That's what happened. Be smart when you deal with kings, when you deal with presidents, when you deal with governors, when you deal with all these authorities. Be smart." Samuel was the one that poured oil on King Saul. And when Saul became king, you remember the story. When, when he told Samuel, said, hey, this is what God wants you to do. Go to Amalek. Destroy everything, both man and beast. Samuel came back. He saved the king. And he saved the king's life. And then they brought some animals. And Samuel came and said, what's going on here? He said, oh, the people, the people, the people. He said, look, you have disobeyed God. You have not done the word of the Lord. He said, no, I've done the word of God. He said, you have not. And at some point, he, Samuel turned the way to go. Saul grabbed him and tore his skirt, the Bible says. And so Samuel looked back and said, what? He says, bless me before the people. Now Samuel knew that that blessing would not work. But what did he do? He still turned around to bless him. Why did he, why did he say, no, the Lord has not blessed you? No, he turned around to bless him. Why? He knew he was, now he was the prophet that was ruling over the people. But right now, they have gotten a king. And that kingship authority supersedes his own authority as a prophet. So he turned around and he blessed him for peace. He prayed for him and he blessed him. And then he went home. He didn't argue with him. He told him, this is what the Lord is saying. And left quietly. Someone without understanding would challenge the king. And then the king kills you. The only time you challenge a king is when you have heard a dossier of the Lord. Now that means you are functioning from another authority. Now, all you do, don't even add to it. If you add to it, you'll get into trouble. You just say exactly what was said to you and leave. Don't explain. Just say it as it was told you and leave it. Now, whenever, if the king gets upset and wants to challenge you, the angels will rise on your defense. Because those angels, they came to defend that word. That's why you find Elijah. Imagine he just killed all the prophets of Baal. Then Jezebel came and said, I will kill him if I catch him today. What happened to Elijah? He ran away. He ran away. Where is his anointing? He understood that if this woman comes after me, she will kill me. God will not defend me. He knew. He knew. He knew the king was soft, but the wife was not soft. But the wife can use her husband's authority against him. He knew. So that's why he arranged that whole thing with the prophets about when the queen, Jezebel, was not around. 
He says, sometimes you don't understand. You see these things happen, you just, you know, you're just a man of God. Me, I'm a man of God. I'm going to challenge. He don't understand the wisdom behind the things they did. He ran. The same reason when Herod was after Jesus. Who were all the angels that were supposed to protect Jesus? But the word of the Lord came to Joseph. He said, carry the son and flee to Egypt. Why? When the authority is against you, no angel can defend you. Get, get wisdom. Get wisdom. Praise God. My time is up. I pray God brings understanding to your heart today. These things might sound strange to you, but it's the truth. If you will calm down and ask the Holy Spirit, He will help you understand. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.